bone to pick with you. About what? Why didn't you tell me that Nancy's baby was born a baby boy? Oh, that. Mm? Oh, that? Nurse Eckley said you spoke to her on the phone. How come she always knows everything, huh? How come? Because she just knows everything, that's all. So, come on, how's the baby? Good. And big. How big is big? Eight pounds, um, 13 ounces. That's big. That's very big. So, um, did she name the baby Carl? Mm-hmm. I must say, you were uh, more excited for Nancy before the baby was born. Jeff, I'm thrilled for her. Really, yeah. I am. Well, you can't prove that by me. You could have fooled me. Okay. I am really disappointed about losing the house. So am I. Look, they, uh, there will be other houses. Not like the Pearson house. Well, look at it this way. We may have lost a house today, but we gained a brand new friend, Carl Blair Jr. Now, doesn't that help? Not as much as having our own housework. I think that everyone is starting to get a little impatient, Frank. Why not? This wedding's 20 minutes over two already. What do you suppose is keeping her? With Erica? It could be anything. Her veil's crooked. She doesn't like the color of her nail polish. She decided that the last minute she probably doesn't like her hair. Frank, you're terrible. It's probably true. She doesn't care how long she keeps us waiting. I cannot believe this. We finally made it inside the church, and that monarchine is still keeping us waiting. I have half a mind to get up and go walking straight out that door. Oh, be feel perfectly free to do so. But I wouldn't dream of leaving without you, Charles. And I wouldn't dream of leaving under any circumstances. That settles that we stay. But I do hope, Charles, this shows you the kind of woman that motorcade person is. I share the slightest sense of social propriety. We wouldn't be sitting here twiddling our thumbs. We'd be witnessing a wedding. This was supposed to be a 10.30 wedding. Now, I can't wait any longer. Father Curran, I'm sure Erica will be here very soon. You said that 10 minutes ago. Now, I have an 11.30 baptism to perform, and I will not keep my parishioners waiting. All our friends are here. I'll shorten my homily if necessary. That would hardly solve the problem. Mr. Cudahy, I'll give your bride 10 more minutes. If she's not here then, I'm canceling the wedding. Oh, Father, she'll be here, believe me. I'm sure she's on her way right now. Oh, that's very sweet of you, Nick. I'm sure Tom and I will be happy. Oh, we're already happy. As a matter of fact, I've never been more in love in my whole life. Oh, sure, if you have to go, I won't hold you. Well, goodbye, Nick. Thanks for calling. Erica, you can't marry Tom. What? If you're still in love with Nikki, which I think you are, you can't go through with this marriage today. I don't understand what you're talking about. I'm talking about your feelings, about your life. Answer me, Erica. Do you love Nick? Hey, is there going to be a wedding here today or what? Well, of course there is. Will you give my mother her clothes mark and hurry up so she can get dressed? Mrs. Kane, this is everything that was on the bed. I certainly appreciate your picking them up for me, Mark, but I'm really not sure. Mother, you have to get dressed. Hurry up. Mark, go and get the car. Gotcha. We'll be down in five minutes. Will you stop looking at me like that and get dressed? I'm not getting dressed, Erica. Mother! There's nothing to be a wedding as long as you still love Nick. 
I don't rob Nick. I don't believe you. Well, then don't. But I'm getting married to Tom today, and there is nothing you can do about it. Oh, yes, there is. I can stop the ceremony halfway through. I will not let you marry that lovely young Tom Cuddy if you don't love him. I simply will not. Can you look me in the eye and tell me that you don't love Nikki? I don't love Nikki. There. Are you satisfied? Just think, think what you're doing. You're marrying one man when you're in love with another one. You keep saying that. You keep saying I'm in love with Nick. Well, I'm not in love with Nick. I'm in love with Tom. For the last time, I'm in love with Tom. Couldn't you just postpone this for a little while? No. Won't you trust me, Mother? Please, just once. Can't you just wait for a little while? No, I will not. Now, will you please hurry up and get dressed? You have held us up enough already. But I don't feel and like I don't need any more lectures. Tom and I are going to be married this morning. That is all there is to it. Okay, let's talk about what you're depressed about. You mean about the house? And how we learned that Mrs. Pearson wasn't going to sell it. Do you also have a bone to pick with me about how I talked to your Uncle Paul? Mm, a little bit. All right, I'm sorry. I was wrong to blame him because Mrs. Pearson changed her mind, but I just got so angry. And I mean, he didn't just have to throw it at us like that. I mean, bang, you have no house. He didn't exactly say it that way. Oh, but Chef, the point is, if, if he hadn't been off in New York City making arrangements for that, that jogging marathon of his, he would have gotten Mrs. Pearson's signature on the purchase agreement yesterday, right on the spot when she agreed to sell it to uh, us. We don't know that for a fact. It's a fairly safe assumption. What is it that you want me to do? Do you want me to call Paul and apologize that to him? I will. That won't be necessary. I don't want him to hold it against me. Tiny, he won't. Look, I explained to him just how much that house meant to you. You did? Yes, and just how anxious you were for both of us to, to have a place of our own. Jeff, you didn't tell him that I'm unhappy living at your house. It's truth, isn't it? Oh, Jeff, he is your uncle. He will tell your father. Your, your father will tell your grandma. Oh, no, Kate. no, no, won't happen. I promise. Yes, nothing seems to be working out. We just don't seem to be having any luck. We had all the luck in the world to lose that. Well, that's true. So, don't let it get you down, huh? We're going to find a place of our own. All it's going to take is a little time and determination. That's all. You know, you're right. Mm -hmm. That's what it's going to take. Determination. That's what I need. I am going to get that house. <clears throat> I am. Mrs. Pearson doesn't want to sell that house. She right? made a verbal agreement. I, I know, but we don't want to get involved in the middle of a legal hassle, do we? If it's going to get us that house, I do. There'll be other houses. Not like the Pearson house. Jeff, look, maybe if we just offered her some more money. She doesn't want more money. Honey, you heard what Paul said. She loves that house. She's lived there all her life. She doesn't want to leave. But, Jeff, if it's for her own good. I mean, the house is too big for her. Son agrees. I mean, Dr. Pearson says in a nursing home she'd be able to get the care and the medical attention that she needs. But she doesn't want that. Put yourself in her shoes. But yet, what if it was Grant? She wouldn't want to leave either. No, she wouldn't. So? I think that we're better off just forgetting about the house. I bet. I bet if I talk to Dr. Pearson, he could convince her. Oh, no, oh, no, no, not that. No, no, honey, it's not smart. You don't want to get involved in the middle of a family hassle. I wouldn't be getting involved in the middle of anything. I'd just be asking him for his help. But it might backfire. Jeff, this is our only chance to get that house. I'm going to call him right now. I've just never heard of having the best man and the maid of honor sign a marriage certificate before the ceremony. It's a bit unorthodox. 